Hi, I'm Kristen, and today I'm going to be giving you my opinion of the Faf uh, quilt binder attachment. Uh, and my opinion is, just as a spoiler, a bit mixed. <laughs> so um, I normally machine bind my quilts, and this, the idea of buying this, um, I bought it for £100. I'm in the UK, so not sure exactly how much it costs in the US. But anyway, the idea of buying this was that um, you it kind of double folds the binding so that you can kind of go around the quilt in one go rather than um, doing it on the back first and then flipping it over and machine, machine sewing it on the front, which is how I normally do my quilts. So the idea was to kind of like speed up the whole machine binding process. I'm not never been a hand sewing the binding girl so <laughs> anything to make the sort of finishing off of the quilt bit faster I want to try so that's why I tried this. So I'm going to show you me using the tool on a practice piece um, but this isn't an instructional video because I've only tried the tool three or four times so it's more um, to give you sort of a clearer sense of how easy or not easy it is to get to grips with this tool. If you just watch the instructional videos from the like pros and stuff, it looks super easy. <laughs> and I haven't found it easy, which doesn't mean that I don't like it necessarily. I just want to give you a more realistic picture of what it's like to use the tool in real life. After I show you me using the tool on the practice piece, I'm also going to go over this quilt, which was my first quilt on the Moxie, where I bound it completely with the tool and I will show you um, how that turned out. Okay, so in order to use the tool, you need to have a stitch plate that has these two holes here. So this is the wider of the two stitch plates that come with the FAF 720 and I think they come with most of the newer uh, FAF machines as well. And if not, I think you can buy them and add them, but don't quote me. Anyway, um, but it's basically this, uh, tool comes with three little screws with the clear heads and two of them are to attach this bit. The instructions are all in the little leaflet and once you have this bit on you don't have to take it off when you take it off of the machine. So you just sort of put this on the first time you use it kind of thing. And then there's another screw here and you put that in the one at the back. So first of all, this is called the double fold half inch binder. So when we feed the strips through here and then through this little thing at the end, which I'll show you, it's gonna like fold the raw edges in essentially. Um, so it's not that different as far as I can tell from like a bias binding tool, I think. Um, I realized this after the fact. Um, now, I don't know what sizes you can buy bias binding tools in and whether there's something about this that makes it different. Um, but if you have one of those, you might wanna consider it because this is expensive and those are cheap. Those are like, I'm sure I've seen them for less than 10 pounds. Okay, so this is the, the practice piece that I'm gonna bind. It's just like a quilt as you go practice sample thing. And normally if I was binding something like this, I would use a two and a half inch strip folded in half and I would go sew the raw edge to the edge, do my little stop at a quarter inch bitered corner thing, and then keep going all the way around. And then I would flip it. And then, I just, and then machine bind it again on the front. It's hard to show you here, but, <laughs> but anyway, and then machine bind it again on the front. So I'd be doing it twice. And the idea of this is you don't have to do that. So you, use instead of two and a half one and three quarter inch strips so this is these are my strips for this one and you don't have to fold and iron them in half um so you're just going to put them through as they are so that saves a little mini step as well which i kind of liked <laughs> so um right so where's the end let's find it right so here's the end and you feed it through here and then if I got a little pointy thing, this is um, just to feed it through. Hopefully you can see that. And before I do that bit, I'm gonna thread this. So I think it's supposed to go like that, basically. And then you just sort of bunch it up over to the other side. Okay, so then we get to this point and we have the little pointy end here and you kind of pull it through 
these two notches and then can you see what it's doing that it's folding the raw edges under there so that's i think the cool bit right so i haven't put the foot on yet <laughs> so this is the foot so i'll just pop that on okay and the foot has a little guide on the side i'm not sure if you can see that from this angle but i might show another angle and it does have a little notch for the idt so you can put that in if you have it right so so i've pulled it through like that okay so i've got the guide there i'm kind of set at a funny angle because i'm trying to <laughs> get the camera at the right angle and trying to get focused on the right thing here um so apologies but anyway basically just slide it in and then what i'm trying to do is make sure one that this is inside and two that my needle is gonna be like right on the edge so i need to move the needle over a bit i think here So the fast, this one anyway has a, you can change the needle position. So that looks a bit better. All right, let's try. Right, cool. Okay. And this bit usually goes, she says, fairly smoother. It just feeds through. Oh, it could be closer to the edge there, but anyway. You'll get the idea. Okay, now we're getting to the really fiddly bit, which is the corner, right? I'll show you the, the straight edge in a minute, um, but this is the bit that I find a bit difficult. I have watched the videos <laughs> on it, but anyway, so I'm gonna go straight to the end. And I've seen ones that say, don't cut the thread and all this stuff, but I, I think that's in case you're gonna like fix it with hand sewing, which I'm not gonna do. So I'm gonna cut the thread. And then, so you can see this, I don't, this is, it starts off in the right place and then it's um, a little bit wider here. So it should have been closer to the edge. And I think that's because I wasn't pushing this up against the side of the thing. So that's something to fiddle with. But anyway, once you get to this point, the idea is that you make a little shape like that. So you're just pushing the end of this and then and then you make your mitered corner like that. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and that's fine. And I've seen ones where you glue, I'm gonna try it, but honestly, this hasn't worked for me before the gluing bit, but I'll try it anyway. Um, so this is where I'm not gonna be selling you this because it's like, this is no, more, no less fiddly than when I do the corners normally, but Imagine if we could get the knack of this, right? And then and then we only had to go around the quilt once. That would be cool. So that's my thinking. But and this is just it glue based. Anyway. Okay. So this this bit I find a bit tricky. So I try and put it back in and then look, then the end is out. So then I need to find a way to um get it to do the thing it's supposed to be doing here which is to put the ends in so maybe like that right and then fiddle it back in and honestly the, the other two videos that I've seen make it look so easy and <laughs> I can't get it in right so this is there we go right right now but I can't see the back Okay, and one of the videos, they tell you to like pull the back over more than you think. And that probably is the trick, but I can't quite get the knack of that. So anyway, we're going to see what happens. Sometimes this works perfectly and sometimes it doesn't work at all. Right. So is that far enough? Can we see? Okay. It's sort of caught the back, but not. See, I'll show you. See, I'm gonna show you this at the end. I'm gonna show you the issues at the end. You can't see that there. Hang on, I'll show you once I've got round. So, where are we? Where was that corner? That was it up there, right. So, it's caught the corner. Obviously, I have a little bit of threads to, to clip, that's fine. But look, here it's not turned under where it's supposed to on the back. So, I probably needed another trick 
for getting that in the right way there. So I'm gonna need to fix or something. But anyway, let's try another corner, see if I can do it any better. Right. So, get it into the position. Pull it over on the back. And I'm just gonna try and shove it under without gluing it this time. I don't know how much difference the gluing makes. Right. And then I try and look under, it looks like it's folded under, but it's you're blind back there is the issue, right? It's not looking it's not looking amazing i mean look at that that's not looking amazing but bits of it look see some this is the bits that make me <laughs> go this thing can work i just need to i just need to figure it out um anyway so this is the last second to last corner probably should have started further down on this edge anyway okay oh we didn't look at the back let's look at the back yeah so this one didn't catch this happens a lot to me can you see that all right let me get it in the light let me get it in the light this one didn't catch so i'm gonna have to go back over and stitch that this this is the problem it's not the fold the not folding under that i get most of the time this is what i get most of the time where the corner didn't quite catch where you're supposed to pull it over more and i have seen that someone did tell me that in a video but how you get it to do that she used all manner of pins and things i just feel like well, that's the same complaint i have about everything it should be easier if you're gonna buy the tool it should be easier <laughs> which is probably not a good attitude right so anyway All right, so I'm gonna cut this off. Really roughly, because I'm just gonna cover it. So, last corner here. And then we'll, I'll show you how the corners turned out afterwards. I'm just fiddling with it. All right. And then I'm just covering it. There's a, there's a thing about if you're further, if you're, if you're like further down here, right? And you're not already meeting this place where you're gonna join, that there's a thing about how long you should cut your strip at the end and it'll end perfectly. I will link to a more instructional video in the description. This is literally just showing you a real per <laughs> person using it and you can go, yeah, I could do it better than her or no, I couldn't. <laughs> so that's, that's basically what this is. Right, I know I've got over where I need to. And I'm gonna cut. And this is, uh, I can't work out how you fold the ends in and do all that with this thing attached. I did. So I'm taking it off now. Uh, back here, hang on. And take this out. Take it off. And then I'm gonna trim this. that's out of the way and then I'm gonna fold this under now this is you're not gonna want to imitate this binding as the thing right because this looks terrible but anyway uh, I will show you what it looked like on an actual quilt in a second as well right and so then I would just finish it there okay so let's have a better look at this right issues um, so the front, there are sections. Where are the sections that look good? This section here, can you see that? There you go, there. You see it's pretty close to the edge and it looks all right. And I have had on bigger, that one, the quilt I'm gonna show you, bigger sections that look like this, which is why, and then on the back, similarly, there, not here. 
it looks all right. And this is where I'm like, oh, this thing could work. I need to keep persisting with it, right? Um, and then there's sections where I get pulled off to the edge. This is probably just practice, how to hold it, how to feed it through. And then on the back is where it's more difficult because you can't see what you're doing. So uh, these, this one and this one, this is what happens. This one and this one, I don't catch the corners. And then I go, I have on the other quill, I'll show you. I just go back and do that bit again. Look. Um, and then here, you know, it's a little, it's not close to the edge, but I think that's probably not close to the edge on the other side too. So if I got it close to the edge on this side, it would also be on here. So like it's bound and it's quick, but it doesn't look as good as when I use the other machine binding method um, that obviously takes more time. So let me show you the uh, large quilt that I did with it. I'll just go around the binding and show you what it looks all the way around. So this was my first proper quilt on the Moxie, I've seen that video. Uh, and I used the quilt binder tool to do the binding. So, and it's just, it's matching. So it'd be hard to see the threads cause it's navy thread, navy binding, navy whatever. And I haven't trimmed it yet. So you can just kind of see where I had to, you know, kind of what it looks like at the end. So there's the first corner, not super neat. Uh, and it didn't totally catch on the back. So um, I still have to go back and do that little bit and then we'll go this way. I think that bit, can you see that? Looks all right. And on the back, it's pretty close to the edge. And then I'm just sort of flipping around. Now, I think there's a section here, yeah, here, where it didn't quite catch on both sides. So I had to go back and do another little stitch. Now when it's all the same color, probably no one will notice that. Oh, this must be my ending section. So this is where I was ending it and folding it over. It looks a bit wonky. That's not the technique to use, <laughs> I'm sure, to end it. And I suppose you could, I don't know, could you do it the way? So normally, I guess if I was doing machine binding, you know, you'd leave your tails and then uh, join them on the diagonal and then put it back. So you might be able to just stop and do that bit the same. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and then there's another section where I had to go back and go over because it didn't catch on both sides. It must've been the back, it didn't catch there. And that corner, I'm just gonna show you it in case you're interested. So there's long, the long straights on the practice pieces and on this, you can get to thinking, oh, this is really working. Um, and then it's just when you get to the corners or you stop and see that it didn't catch in a section on the back when you're like, mm, that's not, not ideal, right? Uh, so am I all the way around? I don't know. Um, There. So like that, like when it just catches on the back and you're like, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So <laughs> then it feels like this tool could really work. So, and there is, I think that's the last corner and that one looks okay. It's not, it's not totally mitered. It's not gone to the corner. Well, I'm not even showing it to you. Sorry. Uh, it's not totally mitered, but it's neat, you know? Okay. So my verdict on the quilt binder tool, it's not foolproof. <laughs> it's not like this tool is going to make something super easy for you that wasn't easy before. If you've already got issues mitering corners in the way that, that many people would do it by machine, then I'm not sure this is going to make it a hundred times better for you. Um, however, if you've got the patience to learn the technique and practice and experiment, then I do feel like um, this tool could make it much, much easier and quicker to bind a quilt, which is why I keep trying it and seeing if it turns out better the next time. And eventually it might, eventually I might figure out these little, but you know, I'm not into sticking, you know, seven pins <laughs> in everywhere just to make something work. So if that's the only thing that's gonna make it work, I might stick with the way I normally do it. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, questions I have for you guys though, cause I do. One is, does anybody out there have like a, 
I think it's called a bias binder tool, but basically something that looks like that, but isn't called a quilt binder attachment. It might even be for a different brand of machine. Um, and does it work pretty much the same? And can you buy those? Can you buy the widths? Can you buy them to fit different widths of strips? For example, like, does it have to? So this one's very specific. It has to be one and three quarter inch strips that you're using. Um, so I'd be interested to know if that's, you know, if that's basically just a really expensive binder tool or hemming tool, you know, you know, there's a, there'll be another name for it where you put the edge, the binding on uh, what some other thing that you're making, maybe even a dressmaking tool. I'm not sure um, because it does seem expensive. Yes, you get a foot with it. Um, so maybe that counters some of that cost, but I don't know. Um, second question would be if you have the attachment and it works great for you, what are your top tips? <laughs> because I want to know them and I'm sure anyone else who is watching this probably wants to know them too. So I am going to link in the description. I'm sure I said it earlier in the video, but I'm definitely going to link in the description to the proper instructional videos of people who know how to use this tool and are showing you how to use it. My personal experiences of having watched that, those I still couldn't quite um, get it to work for me, but uh, you might have better luck. So I hope you <laughs> enjoyed seeing me struggle with that um, and giving you some food for thought if you're considering um, buying uh, an attachment like that. Uh, if you like videos like this and you would like to see more, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and do leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Okay, thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye.